On this James the Bike Guy, we're checking out Santa Cruz's long travel all mountain bike, the Santa Cruz Nomad. And this is the new version five for 2021 in the CR build. So this is a carbon fiber trail bike with 170 millimeters of travel. And we're gonna go into some of the features and designs of this bike, talk about what changed for the version five, go over all its components. And then finally, we'll find out exactly what it weighs. So go ahead and hang out with me. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and hit that subscribe if you find it interesting. The Santa Cruz Nomad has been a nameplate on Santa Cruz's lineup for quite some time. And in fact, this is the version five of it. But what the Nomad has been all about since the very beginning has been an all mountain trail bike that's designed to be able to tackle descents, but still get you back uphill. So it's gonna be focused more on the ability to be rowdy and go downhill. And it's gonna be set up with 27 and a half inch wheels. So in Santa Cruz's lineup, this would match up with their Mega Tower series, which is the 29er. Slightly less travel on the Mega Tower, but it's got the bigger wheels. Whereas this is running 170 millimeters of travel in the back end of the bike and 170 up front. But the neat things with the Nomads is rather than chasing after the absolute fastest times, this bike should be set up where it's gonna be snappy and fun, kind of like the more playful, shorter travel Bronson in Santa Cruz's lineup but gives you that extra degree of error that can be had with the 170 millimeters of travel to get you through some mistakes or encourage you to do bigger hits. And for 2021, they've updated it to this version five where it's gonna come only in carbon fiber. So this version is the C build, which is the least expensive carbon fiber. And they also have it in a CC. The riding characteristics are supposed to be the same, so Santa Cruz claims, but a little bit extra weight on the C version of the frame. And interestingly, there is no aluminum version, although who knows if that'll come in the future. Getting into the design of this frame, there's a lot of things to talk about. So this is the C version, but the specs and the features are gonna be all the same as far as the design of the bike. So for the version five, there's gonna be a few things that have changed up. Carbon fiber frame is gonna have a bit tidier cable routing. It's also got the addition of additional strut on the drive side of the bike. The old generation only had it on the non-drive. So you've got some additional stiffness in the back end of the bike. Really clean look as it goes through and it's gonna have some revisions to the VPP suspension design. VPP is short for virtual pivot point and it's what Santa Cruz is really known for. It uses two links, one up here and one inside of there that counter rotate through the suspension compression. And for 2021 on the version five, what they've done is they've adjusted that suspension leverage curve to be a bit more linear and they've run a longer stroke rear shock. A longer stroke shock is gonna help with performance, especially when it's getting hot, as well as giving it a bit better bottomless feel than the previous generation. And that more linear curve should add to the predictability out on the trail. Now around the bottom bracket area, you'll notice there is a threaded bottom bracket, which is always nice to see. It's also set up with some ISCG mounts. You can run chain guides like this E13 chain guide that comes on the bike, as well as a bash guard underneath if you wanted to. And going through the back, you'll notice they've got a pretty neat chainstay protector, which I like it with these ribs. It's gonna help keep things nice and quiet. All of our links are gonna be aluminum, running a 31.6 millimeter dropper seat post routing. And up front, you're gonna have a really beefy head tube. That super stiff head tube is keeping the RockShox Zeb in check. So the front end of this bike is 170 millimeters of travel, just like the rear end. And those duties are performed by the RockShox Zeb. This is the Zeb base, but it's still using a 38 millimeter stanchion uh, to the forks, which is just massive, especially when we're used to seeing 36s on bikes like this. This fork looks DH ready, and it's awesome to see that these all mountain to enduro bikes are beginning to come with these forks. Now this is gonna be a short offset fork. It does have the integrated little mud guard here. It is removable if you wanted to, but nice to have it in there and then the damping unit is being run through a new damper for the Zeb. So this is the Charger R damper. This damper system uses their Maxima plus fluid, so it's gonna be nice and quiet. And then on the other side, we've got the Debon Air air spring, which is gonna allow you to adjust air pressure as well as run 38 millimeter tokens to dial in the performance of this fork. 
Now I hope to be reviewing one of these soon, so if you get a chance, hit that subscribe so you can see a Zeb video coming up soon. For geometry, the bike has gotten a bit longer and a bit slacker than the Gen 4 without going too crazy. So in that rear end of the suspension, we're gonna have a flip chip to be able to move it from a high and a low position, so a steep and a slack. And in a size large like the bike we're looking at here, the reach of the bike is gonna be 472 millimeters in the slack position and 475 millimeters in the high position. And then for your head tube angle, you're running a 63.7 in low or a 64 degree in high. Seat tube angle of the bike is nice and steep, even in the slack position at 77 and a half degrees, and then high is 77.9. And then the chain stays are pretty interesting because they're gonna be progressive throughout the frame sizes with the chain stay on the size large coming in at 436 millimeters. So that geometry is a nice update without getting too crazy and too rowdy, which would make this still a real playful bike while prioritizing descending. Cockpit componentry is nicely specced using E13 for the handlebar and stem. So this is the TRS base handlebar. You can see it's got a nice rise to it and a super wide width that you can cut down to your fit. And then the E13 base stem is a work of art in my opinion. I really love the way that it uses the wraparound clamp to go around the steer tube there. It's 35 millimeter bar clamp as well, making stuff nice and stiff. And then you're perched up on a WTB saddle mounted up on the SDG TELUS dropper post. So this dropper post here, all internally cable routed, it does come with a real nice dropper lever in my opinion. So it's one by style, it's matchmaker, so it's mating up with those SRAM brakes and nice little press and it moves right up. Small feature, but I love is the cable is all captured inside. So you don't see it until you push the lever, which personally gives a nice clean and finished look to this cockpit. With this Nomad being the R build, it is the most affordable drivetrain. So we're running a SRAM NX drivetrain. This is NX Eagle, meaning it is a one by setup running this 32 tooth narrow wide Eagle chain ring up front flowing back to a 12 speed, 11 to 50 tooth rear cassette. So this is a super wide range rear cassette operated through this NX Eagle derailleur. And this setup is clutched, works pretty well. Not the lightest group set out there, but known for its durability. In the cockpit, it's no different using this NX shifter. So you've got a thumb button to bring you to an easier gear, another thumb button forward to a harder gear. And this is matchmaker clamped to the SRAM guide brakes. These are a DOT fluid brake with a reach adjustment. And then down at the caliper, you're gonna have a four piston caliper clamping onto these SRAM centerline rotors. And brakes like that are gonna have enough power for this thing while descending. And with a four piston caliper and that large reservoir on the handlebar should give lots of heat dissipation as well. Wheel and tire setup is pretty solid here as well using these WTB STI 30, 30 millimeter internal width rims. They're laced up to the SRAM front and rear hubs. Of course, boost 15 by 110 up front and 12 by 148 in the rear. And then for tires, we've got Maxxis. So this is the Maxxis Asagai front tire, a super aggressive front tire. This is their max grip compound with the XO plus protection. So additional durability in the front end. Out back, that durability is continued with the XO plus rear tire of the Minion DHR2. DHR2 out back is 27.5 by 2.4, making for some really beefy tires on the front and the rear of this bike. The actual weight for the Santa Cruz Nomad V5 CR build is gonna come in and weigh. Thirty three point eight two pounds. Thanks for watching this video on the Santa Cruz V5. This CR build is a pretty nice spec with lots of hard hitting parts while saving a bit on the drivetrain on wheels to keep the price point reasonable. So go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. While you're at it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe and browse the channel so you can see more videos like this in the future.